Hey everybody, and welcome to the video on circular motion involving normal forces. By way of review, a normal force is a type of contact force, and it contributes to centripetal forces when a mass in circular motion is in contact with the surface. A good example of circular motion involving normal forces is when a roller coaster goes about a circular curvature, whether it's at the bottom of the circle or at the top of the circle. We'll look at it We'll look, we'll look at a variety of different scenarios involving normal forces. A very important point to keep in mind here is that the direction of normal force depends on the orientation of the surface. So it is very important for us to identify what is the exact orientation of the surface before we can analyze the normal forces and the centripetal force for the circular motion. A washing machine has a drum of radius 0.3 meters. The drum spins at 525 revolutions per minute. A sock of mass 0.025 kilograms is observed to be spinning at a horizontal circle against the wall of the drum. Calculate the angular speed and the centripetal force on the sock. So in this particular scenario, the normal force is pointing towards the right, towards the center of the circle. This is because the surface in relation to the sock is vertical. And remember that the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. So in this case, the normal force is also equal to the centripetal force of the circular motion. For angular speed, remember that omega equals to 2 pi, which is the radians in one revolution, divided by the period of motion. The period of motion can be calculated by 1 over the frequency. And we can calculate the frequency by using this number here, 525 revolutions per minute. So if we have 525 revolutions per minute, this, this is over 60 seconds. We want to find out how many revolutions the washing machine undergoes in one second. And this gives me 8.75 revolutions per second. So this is the frequency of the circular motion. And if we go back to the period equation, this will be 1 over 8.75. The period of motion is 0.114 seconds. So then the angular speed omega equals to 2 pi divided by 0.114. And this gives us the angular speed of 54.98 radians per second. Now for the centripetal force, the normal equation for centripetal force here is mv squared over r. And remember that since v is equal to the linear velocity equals to 2 pi r divided by time, or the period, this is also equal to omega, which is 2 pi over period, times by the radius. So we can substitute this equation into my centripetal force equation to get m omega r squared divided by the radius. The radius at the top and bottom will cancel out, and what we'll get as a final equation is m omega squared Using this equation, we can then use the angular speed, which we calculated before, to find the centripetal force. The mass of the sock is 0.025 kilograms. The angular speed was 54.98 radians per second, so squared, and the radius of motion is 0.3 meters. And the centripetal force in this case will be 22.7 newtons towards the center of circle center of the drum. All right, moving on to part B, calculate static friction coefficient, mu s, between the sock and the drum surface. So previously, we've determined that the centripetal force has a value of 22.7 newtons. So this is the magnitude of the centripetal force. We've also deduced that in this particular scenario, it is the normal force that is providing the centripetal force. So the magnitude of the normal force equals to the magnitude of the centripetal force. We also know that the static friction, Fs, is equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. And in terms of vector diagram, in the vertical plane, the weight force of the sock going downwards, so Fg, the weight force, will be equal to the upward static friction, Fs. These two vectors will be equal in magnitude 
as the sock will be staying in the horizontal plane and therefore being able to undergo horizontal circular motion. If any of these forces is greater or becomes greater than the other one, the sock will be going either upwards if the static friction is greater or going downwards if the weight force overcomes the friction force. So in this case, since Fs is equal to mg, the weight force, we also know mg is equal to the static friction times by the normal force. And remember, the normal force is also equal to the centripetal force over here. So the static friction coefficient is equal to mg divided by the centripetal force. So the mass of the sock is 0.025 kilograms. G is 9.8 meters per second squared divided by the centripetal force, 22.7 newtons. And this gives me 0.011 as the coefficient for static friction. As we discussed in the very beginning of the video, the direction of the normal force depends on the orientation of the surface that provides it. So let's have a look at a vertical oriented normal force. A 2000 kilogram car travels on a road at a speed of 20 meters per second. The radius of curvature at two points A and B are both 50 meters, as you can see in the diagram here. Calculate the normal force exerted by the road at point A. So at point A, when a car reaches point A, we have two vectors. One is of the weight force going down, and the other is of the normal force going upwards. Let's call that N. And we know if the car undergoes circular motion at point A, it will undergo a centripetal force. Now in this case, a centripetal force is contributed by two forces, the normal force, Fn, minus the weight force which is acting in the opposite direction as the centripetal force. We know the centripetal force is given by the equation mv squared over r, and this equals to the normal force minus the weight force. And if we rearrange and add the weight force on both sides, we'll get the normal force is equal to mv squared over r plus the weight force. The mass of the car is 2000 kilograms. The velocity of the car is 20 meters per second. Specifically, this is the linear velocity divided by the radius, 50 meters, plus the mass again, 2000, times by 9.8, which is gravity. And this will give us the normal force magnitude. And this gives us the answer of 35,600 newtons upwards. Okay, what about at point B? At point B, the normal force, it is still acting upwards, and the weight force is still acting downwards. So mg going down, and the normal force acting upwards. However, it's important here to note that the centripetal force of the circular motion is now pointing downward, unlike before. So Fc here is pointing downwards towards the center of the circle. So in this case, the centripetal force is equal to the weight force minus the normal force. And by adding the normal force on both sides, the normal force is then equal to the weight force minus the centripetal force. Weight force is 2000 times by 9.8 minus the centripetal force, which is mv squared over r. So mv squared over r. Mass is 2000 kilograms. The velocity is still 20 meters per second squared divided by the radius of 50 meters. And this gives us a number of 33,000 newtons and upwards. What you should take away from this question specifically is to recognize that despite the fact that the normal force is acting in the same direction, its magnitude changes as the direction of the centripetal force is different between A and B. So it is very important for you to be able to draw these force vectors and from recognizing the direction of the normal force, we can then find this magnitude by writing the equations for the weight force and the centripetal force. Part C, in the same scenario, what will be the maximum speed that the car can travel at point B without losing contact with the road? So at point B, as we said earlier, the downward weight force when combined with the upper normal force is what contributes to the centripetal force. 
So running the same equation again, the centripetal force is equal to the weight force, subtract the normal force. In the question, this is a key phrase, without losing contact with the road. Now you can imagine, if we make the normal force a subject, like we did before, mg minus the centripetal force, which is mv squared over r, if the velocity of the car, while it's in circular motion, so v, if it becomes larger, then the normal force becomes smaller because we are subtracting the centripetal force. So the maximum speed occurs when the normal force becomes zero. And this is because when the normal force is zero, the vehicle is losing or just losing contact with the surface. So losing contact with the surface is saying when the normal force becomes zero. So we can make the normal force zero and we'll get mg minus mv squared over r. And if we add mv squared over r on both sides, we'll get mv squared over r equals to mg. And we'll cancel the mass on both sides and we'll get v squared over r equals to g. And if we times radius on both sides, we'll get v squared equals to rg. And therefore, velocity, the maximum velocity, so let's call that v max, is equal to the square root of rg. So the velocity max equals to the square root radius is 50 meters, and gravitational acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. And this gives us a velocity of 22.1 meters per second. So this is the speed at which the car must stay under if it wants to avoid losing contact with the surface. If the vehicle travels any faster than the speed, it will then fly off and slip off the actual curvature at point B. In the final part of the video, we'll take a look at another vertical circular motion involving normal forces, but this time the orientation of the surface will be slightly different. So using the very early example of the roller coaster, a roller coaster ride travels in a vertical circle of a radius of 15 meters as shown in the diagram. At the top of the circle, the roller coaster is upside down as you can see. Calculate the minimum speed required for the roller coaster to prevent its passenger from falling out. So in this case, we've got two forces acting on the roller coaster. We've got its weight force, mg, acting downwards. And at the same time, we've also got the normal force acting downward as well. In this particular scenario, we have circular motion, so therefore we must have centripetal force. The centripetal force is also acting downwards towards the middle of the circle, Fc. And as you can see in this scenario, because my normal force and my weight force are both pointing in the same direction as the centripetal force, they will both contribute to the magnitude of the centripetal force. And so in terms of equations, Fc is equal to the normal force plus the weight force, mg. The centripetal force is mv squared over r. This equals to the normal force plus the weight force. If we subtract the weight force on both sides, we'll get the normal force is equal to mv squared over r minus mg. In this mathematical equation, have a think about the effect of changing speed or velocity of the circular motion. If the velocity becomes larger, then the normal force will become larger. So therefore, the normal force exerted by the track on the roller coaster or the normal force exerted by the roller coaster on the passengers sitting on it will become larger as well. So bigger the velocity, larger the normal force. There will be more contact between the passengers and the seats. Vice versa, if the velocity of circular motion becomes smaller, then the normal force becomes smaller. And if we keep on decreasing the velocity to a point where it becomes a minimum speed, the normal force will become zero as well. And when the normal force becomes zero, this is when the passengers will lose contact with the seats and they will fall out of the roller coaster. So this is something we don't want to happen when it comes to a roller coaster ride. So the minimum speed occurs when the normal force is zero. And zero equals to mv squared over r minus mg. And if we add the weight force on both sides, we'll get mg equals to mv squared over r. The mass and mass will cancel out. And if we rearrange the equation, we'll get v squared equals to gr velocity equals to the square root of gr. So here in this case will be 
square root of 9.8 times by 15 meters. And this equals to 46.96 meters per second. So in this scenario, if the velocity is any less than this numerical value, then the normal force will become zero. And that's when the passengers will lose contact with the seats and fall out of the roller coaster. This concludes the video on circular motion involving normal forces.